Hi, I'm Sydney Bowles, B News producer, and I'm here for the monthly Town Administrator update with Town Administrator Paul Sagarino. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure, Sydney. Okay, so we're going to dive right in. Last night, you and I were both at the select board meeting. I was really interested to hear about the progress forming the police station building committee. Um, this is shaping up to be 13 people, but there's some effort to get that down, maybe below 10 potentially. So tell us what's going on there. Well, I made a proposal to the board of what I thought would be a pretty well-rounded committee. And, you know, they were right to point out that there was a lot of members involved there. And, you know, sometimes when you have too many members on a committee, it, it can kind of be counterproductive in, in terms of getting things done. So that was, that was the point of the discussion. I wanted to provide them with a starting point in terms of what they may want to think about. Uh, the police station project's a pretty uh, complicated project. It's going to require a zoning change, and it's going to require, you know, a ballot vote and a town meeting vote as well. So there's a lot of different boards and committees that we need to touch base with on that one. So I figured it would be easier to, to have um, more of them involved from the beginning. Uh, and hopefully, you know, those members go back to their own committees and update them as to what's going on. So everybody's sort of in the loop on the project. So your proposal, I wrote this down so I would get it right, you suggested that there would be two people from the select board, two pe people from the planning board, and one person each from the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee, Capital Budgets, Land Use, and Ways and Means Committees, and then five members of the public. Mm -hmm. um, how do you go about thinking about ways to streamline that without ruffling any feathers? Um, like I said, it's the board's job to do that, and uh, I gave a good uh, initial starting point, and like I say, it's a little bit unusual. This project will require a zoning change, so I think it's important to get some input uh, from those those zoning boards. Um, that I think that will be very helpful to us uh, as we approach town meeting, and ultimately it's the board's decision. Um, Building committees used to be pretty formal. Um, like I say, I've participated in a couple for the new fire station, new public works, and I think because of the school building process that mm -hmm. we're going through now, I think that people have an idea of what a building committee is, and, and that's really the building committee on steroids version. Uh, right, be, be, because, because they have to of, work with the state. Yeah, they have to work with the state, and the state financing is involved, and there's a lot more upfront work that's done as opposed to on a typical municipal building project. So trying to get to some place in the middle of the less formal building committees that we've had in the past, and you know, I feel like just, just because of people are aware of building committees now that there's, there will be an appetite for something that's a little bit more formal this time. So just trying to find the sweet spot in the middle between too formal, less formal, right. too many members, too few members. So right, that's, right. that's the trick. What kinds of things, and I should say this is sort of an advisory committee, it's not formally voting on, on anything. They may vote informally, it sounds like, just to you know get numbers. Provide direction. In yeah. Way, yeah. What kinds of things are they liable to be advising on? Um, there's a lot of different things. Um, in particular, once the project, um, if we're fortunate enough to get funding and bring the project forward, then it becomes a question of uh, once things start getting built, uh, change orders. Oh, you know, we had a problem over here. You know, do we have enough money in the contingency budget? Oh, we could do it this way instead of putting carpet in, we'll put floor in. You know, evaluating different alternatives as they come along to make sure that the project stays on time and on budget. Uh, on this particular project, like I say, given the location in the center of town, I think there's going to be a lot of upfront uh, input sort of in what it looks like. Uh, we know that it's in the town center overlay district, uh, so it's going to have a colonial feel, and you know, it's a beautiful uh, location uh, overlooking the common. So we want to make sure that it fits in right and it's what the community wants. But most importantly, you know, we build these buildings with the expectation that we're going to use them for the next hundred years. So. Right. You know, number one on my list is to make sure that it's a, a state-of-the-art police facility, and then you know we want the rest of it it to come together so it fits in nicely in the community. What about um, those those resident members? This is, uh, from my understanding, it's folks who aren't sitting on any other committee. It's just like members of like residents of town to share their perspectives. What do you look for when you think about the applications that are coming in to make sure that you're getting a diversity of voices, but also um, voices that are going to have some some valuable input, if that makes sense. Well, Sydney, as you know, we have a tough time getting volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> so what I look for is that somebody <laughs> wants to do the job, because <laughs> you know, as uh, like I say, as you've seen, that some of these committees they're they're time consuming and. 
Um, you know, in this case, you know, there may be daytime meetings and people have work schedules. So it, it really is a time commitment. So we're just looking for anybody that, you know, wants to dedicate themselves to the project and be involved and, you know, just uh, participate with us along the way. We got a long journey ahead and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully a successful project. All right, so make the case if someone's watching this and they're on the fence about whether they want to put it in an application, why should they uh, stick their name in the hat? I'll tell you, it's a very, it's always very rewarding to, to um, give back to your community and any resident's input is valuable. I mean, we can't take everybody's suggestion on everything, so I'm sure that's difficult, but it doesn't mean that we don't consider every suggestion or piece of advice that we're given from the public. Um, there's been many great ideas and solutions that have come from just regular folks in the public that have called up with a great idea or an opinion on as to how to do something. And that's, that's something I've learned over the years. Cool, okay. So um, switching topics, uh, last night we also heard from Economic Development Director Melissa Tentacolis, um, just kind of an update on, on what her office has been working on, everything from the really successful slate of beer gardens this summer to how she's thinking about the mall road rezoning issues. So I was really interested to hear her talking about um, office vacancy rates. Uh, she was saying, depending on the numbers that you look at, Burlington's looking at around 16 to 18% vacancy in our office space realm, and that's higher than it's been since the Great Recession in about 2008. Um, so how are you thinking about that? Is it a challenge? Is it an opportunity? How big of a, of a deal is it in your mind as you hear those numbers? Um, like I say, I don't drill down on the individual what it is now, but just to have a plan for going forward, we do have a, we're heavily reliant on our office space. Um, as we've seen, you know, work habits have changed. So not only is there, you know, a 16% vacancy rate, uh, I think that's what she said, um, but there's also, you know, there's a lot of offices where people are coming to work less. So mm -hmm. there's less people in town, you know. The workers that are in town, they support the retail stores and they r support the restaurants. So it really is a ecosystem that ecosystem that sort of works upon itself. And you know, it really works by having having people in town during the daytime. And you know, it's really it's interesting. I think the town's been very proactive. You know, the planning department and economic development. You know, they were really forward thinking in terms of you know getting into the life science business. So that's helped quite a bit. I think the town's been really <clears throat> done a great job with livening up some of these commercial areas with housing where it's appropriate. Um, you know, even during the, the depths of the pandemic, if you went down to the Third Ave area where they've integrated some, some housing down there, it's, it maintained its liveliness. You know, there's mm -hmm. pe lots of foot traffic during the day, people walking on the paths, uh, people going to the stores, people going to work. So it really is working down there. <coughs> and I think that that's something that, um, you know, we would like to bring to other commercial areas of the town, just a little bit of balance there. Um, to you know, balance things out. Um, I know that Boston had studied, you know, transitioning office space to residential. It really doesn't work. It seems like a perfectly logical thing to take an empty building right. and turn it into apartments. But, but I mean, you think about it, it's this huge open floor plan. How are you going to break that into apartments without having a bunch of stuff in the middle yeah, with no windows? There's no windows, yeah. and I think they determined that there's only about ten or eleven of the larger buildings in downtown Boston that may be possible to retrofit for a residential. So it's it's not as easy as just saying, hey, let's just take that office building and turn it into condos or something like right. that. It doesn't and quite work I like that. I was interested to hear Melissa talking about the possibility of subdividing some of our office spaces into just smaller office spaces. So if as our leases come up, which is kind of a, a I don't want to say scary, but it's just something to watch, right, is these are, these are long-term leases people who have had these these offices for, you know, seven, eight, nine years, some of that during the pandemic, might now be thinking, do we want to reevaluate how much space we're renting? But maybe we could subdivide those larger spaces into smaller ones, that kind of an option. Yeah, I'll go back to the beginning. It is very scary to us because again, we're just we're very intimately aware of the relationship between how much um, business pays here in Burlington. You know, they pay a, a lion's share of our budget. Right. So all our services are dependent upon that revenue and it's 
it's very incumbent upon us to just continue to work to cultivate a great um, business community as well. We already know it's a great residential community. And it really is scary when you think about the scope of not only just the pandemic, but changes in office habits. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that you know many companies have realized the full remote option is not a great option. There's just less collaboration, less getting to know the people yeah. on your team. You know, I think we'll see a lot of hybrid going forward and hybrid work situations, couple days in the office, couple days at home, as well as, you know, what we've seen a lot of is right, what they're calling the right sizing of the mm -hmm. leases. So they're sort of shrinking. Um, they're making offices that are, you know, available to whoever comes in the office that day as opposed to assigned office spaces. So there's a lot of changes there. But we're hopeful that, you know, many companies will uh, maintain an office presence and you know we've also seen some information that you know a lot of companies want to be out in the suburbs and they might ha rather have several suburban locations that are easier for mm. their um, employees to get to as opposed to having one central office in downtown Boston. Okay so interesting so potentially Boston's loss could be our gain in some circumstances. In some circumstances yeah. I mean they, okay. I think that they're very very concerned with downtown yeah. Boston. I'm, I don't know if you've been down there lately but you know, during the week, it really is a ghost town down there. And, you know, I think, um, you know, when, when I go around our commercial areas, I'm really pleased to just see that there's just so much activity and so much life to them still, despite, you know, what we've gone through as a community over the, the past several years. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like with some of the zoning changes uh, around Mall Road and the, you know, the other, other corridors that we're pursuing, there's a potential for more mixed use live work spaces that would be more lively would attract more daytime traffic and there's also the the challenge of we don't know how these leases are going to shake out so it's a little bit of like the inf how the information is going to come in how are we going to how's it going to shake out yeah it's uh it's a very complicated thing yeah. and, and like i say we really have a great team uh with melissa and liz working on these things together i, I think they have great vision for the future and again, I'm, I'm very optimistic about what's gonna happen in Burlington in the future. And um, you know, I'm excited. Uh, it's just, it is a little scary uh, when you understand how much office space we have and just any logical person can just say office is a lot different than it used yeah. to be 15 years yeah. ago, so. So it's something to, that I will be ex excited to see how it shakes out for sure. We'll be keeping our eye on it for sure. There we go. <laughs> uh, Town Administrator Paul Sacarino, thank you very, very much for joining me. Hey, thank you too. All right, Great that's been be our here. monthly uh, town administrator update. I'm Sydney Bowles. Thanks for watching.